This is the rolling mill that I like the best. This is a 130 millimeter flat Pepe Tools rolling mill. What it means by flat is that my entire roll has no grooves, it has no wire spots, it's just flat surface of metal. This allows me to have the largest surface that I can to roll with the texture paper to get the best textured metal. Um, it, most mills come as a combo mill, so half of the mill is got the wire grooves and half is smooth, which means you just have a smaller surface. So I really like the flat mills, but both mills work. You can use the Durston mills, which are the more expensive British made mills. You can use the economy mills, but the Pepe Tool mills is by far the best in my opinion. They're um, the best bang for your buck. They're very reasonably priced for a very high quality tool. The first thing you need to do to make sure you're going to be successful with our laser paper is you need to anneal your metal two times. You need your metal to be as soft as possible. It can't be shiny. It needs to be matte and kind of cloudy looking once it comes out of the pickle pot. Your metal also has to be clean and dry. So I always anneal, pickle, dry, anneal, pickle, dry, and then I'm ready to roll. So I'm just using copper today. This is 24 gauge copper. Um, it's just to play with so that you can see what I'm doing. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set our rollers to be the right thickness. Now, most rolling mills have a control on the top to change the thickness and to know the right distance between the, the rollers, you should have, you should be able to barely force your metal into the rollers. So it's going to be kind of tight so that you have to force it a little bit, but it shouldn't be so tight that it can't move because then that's going to be way, way too tight. So you need to have just that so it's tight and you can see that it makes some scratch marks on the metal. That means that the mill is going to be tight enough that once we add the layer of paper and the backing that you're going to have a sandwich ready for your mill that's going to be perfectly the perfect tightness. The first piece is always a little bit of a sample. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my laser paper to the size of my metal. You never use a whole sheet of paper at once because you're never going to get a good impression on such a big surface area. So I trim with a few millimeters around my metal on all edges because the metal might shift and it might stretch. So we want to make sure we have a lot of surface area for the pattern. Then I take a piece of 140 pound watercolor paper. This is that nice thick paper that people like to paint with. Um, and I make a sandwich. It doesn't matter where, as long as it goes texture, metal, watercolor paper. And the watercolor paper can be on the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter. And then I'm ready to feed my watercolor, or my sandwich into the rolling mill. So the important thing about rolling is that you roll it smoothly and you don't stop halfway through. You also hold nice and firmly with your feeder hand the entire time because as soon as you let go, the metal can shift inside the sandwich and that doesn't work out so well. So I'm gonna roll nice and slowly and when I have to let go, I let go. So it's really important that you have only put dry metal against your laser paper. If you have a droplet of water that lands on your paper, it actually kind of destroys the fibers in the paper and the, it'll, it'll look like it's dried, but then when you roll that piece of paper through the mill, you'll wind up with a big plain splotch mark in your metal because the, 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 the fibers aren't strong anymore. So it's very important that you only have dry metal near your paper. Don't let your paper get wet. And you can see that you wind up with the perfect texture left in the metal. We sell our laser paper on our website at www.metaldesigns.com and also on our Etsy page.